Taking a gentleman first leg, it's Fabian to throw first. Game on. His absence is something we will expand upon in due course, but uh, for the time being, let me bring in uh, my co-commentator for this one, Paul Nicholson. Thank you very much, Rob. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for staying with us. 40. I'm not going to say anything about the previous match because I'm so excited about watching Pikachu tonight because he is still in with an outside chance of making the world match play it. And oh, with all of the evidence that we are about to give you, Ricardo Pietrecco is an overwhelming favourite for this contest. He's played Fabian twice in PDC darts, both in qualifiers, 59. in home nation aspects for European tour events. Ricardo's won them both. As far as Fabian Hertz is concerned, he has played six European tour matches in his career oh, and lost them all. Whereas Ricardo is very much on the up. So you've got to favour Ricardo in this one by a distance, I might add. I would say so, yeah. I mean, it's worth stressing that Hertz is no stranger to the European tour, but it's been more than four years since we last saw him. He qualified via either the host nation qualifiers or the European qualifiers as they 74. were for the German Darts Championship and the Dutch Darts Masters in 2014. He made a couple of appearances in, or I should say three appearances actually in 2016. And then his most recent was the European Open in Leverkusen in 2019. Lost in the first round on each occasion. So he's looking to break a, a duck this evening. He's... Uh, 29 years old from Augsburg in Bavaria and a policeman as well 96. that's what I hear if he was a policeman telling me to do something I would do it because he is rather tall yeah best of order from the crowd for this one I do get the feeling throughout the night that 100. that might change when certain players certain legends take the hockey the likes of James Weird, Raymond van Bonneveld and Someone like Gabriel Clemens, maybe? Maybe, just maybe. That's a really interesting play from Ricardo. 89. Yeah, a little Fabian bit. Uruguay, 141. Casual, maybe, in his... I mean, it, it wasn't by accident. It was by design, as, as you say, Paul. It's a, a curious way to go. Oh, what he's done is pay Fabian ultimate Uruguay, respect to... Nine. Fabian Hertz by going that route because he thought that maybe that was the only shot he was going to get. Two fours. Oh, that's beautiful. Look how central that was hit. He's a very talented player, this young man. I remember watching him a lot last year and thinking that the potential was there. Yeah. You're certainly not alone in thinking that as well. He's very highly regarded amongst all of the Germans. He's a great young man, really pleasant, polite. And he's been making steps this year, making a quarterfinal on the European Tour for the first time. I just wonder what his next step could be. 58. Could it be making the match play? Could it be playing in the World Championship and doing something there, like yeah. Clemens did? Because we know about the viewing figures of... Close to three and a half million when Clemens was making the semi-finals. 59. This is um, a significant weekend, actually, for Petretsko because he is in the second year of his tour card as a tour card holder, having come through Q School last year. He's currently 70th on the order of merit. 55. So this second half of the season, this is where he has to really start making inroads as well in terms of getting himself... In staying in that top 64. Yeah, the, the projections for Ricardo have him inside oh, the top 64, but only just. So what he does from now till the end of the World Championship will stipulate maybe where he plays next year. Yeah. He's playing so well at the minute, and it's so encouraging that you wouldn't want that to stop at the end of the year oh, for him to maybe take a backward step in his career. Yeah. I think he's ready to take steps forward, but only he can do those. I think he's got a decent brand as well. I think a lot of young people can get behind the whole Pikachu thing oh, and the Pokemon-themed walk-on song. I know that Fallon Sherrick MBE 
would love that because she collects Pokemon stuff. <laughs> stuff. True Great story. Word. Didn't know that. 45. If Alan Sherrick's in Japan, you know where to find her. She'll be in some sort of toy shop looking for cards or Pokemon related bric a brac. I notice they're standing up because they love the darts now. Well, to be fair, they did give this one rendition of our first match. I thought it was a nice touch, actually. I thought it was a nice way just to reassure the two players on stage if you, if you, if you catch my drift. I think maybe there was a feeling of antipathy towards the two, and it was just a nice way of showing a bit of love for the and players you know on stage. What? I don't want to go on about it too much, but I think if you were to interview Marco right now, to get his views, he'd get more attention than ever. Seven, because Cantalet seven. doesn't get a lot I mean, of attention, even when he's been one of the best finished players in history. But after a game like that, I'd be really interested to get his thoughts. Yeah. As far as Pietreschko is concerned, he's looking to replicate what happened in leg one. Yeah, double four 49. is the target Require once again. For Pietreschko, took it out no bother when he was on a finish of nine. This time he's on a finish of eight. Yeah, and and well, it's the same outcome. It's a hold of throw, and it's 2-0. Just to give you an insight into Fabian Hertz, this year he's only played, from what we can tell, in home nation qualifiers. Yeah. He doesn't go around the challenge tour, he doesn't do anything like that anymore. He's a part-time oh. dark player, and just getting here is an achievement. But yeah. if you were to ask him about his ambitions, he would just love to win a game on that stage in Germany. I think because of the nature of his work, the time commitment clearly isn't there for him. But, I mean, you look at his latest qualifying, or the qualifying that he had here for this particular tournament. I mean, he took out Nico Kurtz and Lukas Weinig, two players with a fair amount of European Tour experience. Kurtz, of course, has really caught the eyes on the biggest stage of the lot at Ali Pali. Um, but, yeah, Hertz got away with the Kurtz match as well. It was 5-2, but he averaged only 77. He must have really caught uh, Kurtz on a... On off day there. Now then. I mean, his opening match he played Till Stein and he won 5 0 with an average of just over 80. Stein averaged 62. So he got off to a helping hand, or he was given a helping hand in his opener. Well, that gives you in indications of how he's playing now. 41. If you want an indication of how he's done on the stage prior to this, the most amount of legs he's got in a match is three. He's been bageled a couple of times, yeah. but his highest average on the stage is 86 oh. when he played Jermaine Watamina in the 2016 European Darts Grand Prix. So that kind of level would be gobbled up by a very efficient Pietretko, but at the minute, he's coasting at 89, and believe me, he can find 15 more if he needs it. I don't think Fabian could find 15 more on an 86. Bearing in mind he's only averaging 71 at the minute. 98. And this is a difficult game for Ricardo in the manner that he doesn't want to be dragged into a bit of a slugfest like we saw in game one tonight. He wants to plod along, do his thing, get some five and six visit legs, and that will be enough. And if that is the case, you can think about Dimitri Vandenberg tomorrow when he wakes up. Yeah. Just another footnote on that first match, by the way. We'll just see if Petretsko can take out this uh, 63, double 12 here. Or double six for a 3 0 lead. And the second break of throw may well return with Hertz on 157. Seems to be going above the treble 20 an awful lot. And with his darts going in the way they are, he's better off missing it low so he can stack them on top. The weight of the dart has really let him down tonight. Bang in the middle. That was a nice certainty about the way he executed that one. Yeah, just the... Uh, well, I'm sure there'll be numerous statistical footnotes on our opening match of the evening, but... Uh, Cancelate with that average of 71.85 and with 
Uh, his opponent, Mindel Lawrence, averaging 71.43, a combined average of 143.28. Uh, the lowest combined average in terms of history. That was the fifth lowest in a first round match on the European Tour. Oh, last 48 three. match on the European Tour. So. I won't lie, social media in the 48 minutes that that game was going on was quite amusing. Everybody was quite creative, so bravo, most of you. 83. Keeping darts entertaining, even when it is a little bit attritional. Yeah. Uh, Roxy James Rodriguez against uh, Thomas Saylor. Uh, combined low average of 138.2 uh, in their match in 2014 in the oh, European Darts Trophy. The pretzels they've, are back. They've been very popular today, those pretzels. Might have to get us some tomorrow for me, you and Dan, to see what, what yeah, the fuss we'll, is about. We'll investigate. But will they beat the chips from Belgium, though? Oh, Never. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. Unlikely. Very unlikely indeed. And I don't think Fabian's going to beat Ricardo. I know that I've got it be impartial here but based on what I'm seeing right now I do not see Ricardo worried I see him confident I hear stories from backstage from earlier tonight where Ricardo started his practice and went maximum maximum 141 to start his practice yeah I don't think he's going to be too perturbed by anything tonight three finishes so far though nine eight and six I wonder if we're going to have a a clean sweep of single-digit finishes you from uh, we, Pikachu. We had a game earlier today that all the finishes were low. I think it was Lukman's game when he was playing against Graham Hall. But in card-playing terms, the finishes in this match, it's like playing Raz. That's where you want to have the worst hand. The worst hand wins. Yeah. So I think the, the best hand you've got to have in Raz is something like... 94. Seven, six, five, four, two. Because <laughs> it's not a straight and it's a rainbow. That's what Ricardo was up to in this game. And if he gets the 84, he completely require 84. puts that to bed. Well, this might just change things as far as the finishing is concerned. Let's see how he fares. Double 11. Yeah, oh, well, it does. That puts that one to bed. 84, the check out there. And again, very sure-footed on the finishing. 11. Not a problem. He's had double three, double 11, double four twice. Nice versatility from Petrescu so far. I genuinely thought he was going to split the 11s. Then he's going to take out 11. Three, double four. But it didn't happen. But what we can say is that Ricardo's been really good when at the double. Four hits from seven is very good. Can't really fault him. I mean, I'm not really reading too much into this just yet. I mean, it's 17 data, 19 data, 16 data, 18 data. Uh, the finishing has looked pretty sure footed, but I think there's plenty of room for improvement here, and it's difficult to fully assess it uh, given the nature oh, of his opponent. But when you consider his seasonal averages 92.81, that is an improvement on last year. He looks way more likely to do bits now than ever. And he's also made a semi-final on the Pro Tour this year. That's no longer a surprise. Whereas when he did it last year, it was a surprise. Even though I'm going to tip my hat to Dan Dawson because the morning of him making a semi-final, Dan tipped it. 58. It was one of the best pieces of tipping I've seen in darts in the last five to ten years. When he said, I think Pietrecco is going to go on a run today, probably make the last four. And then he wanted to make the last four. I thought it was genius. Yeah, that's why he does what he does. And he's hugely respected. Pietrecco is looking good value here for a 5-0 lead. Hurts. Yet to a have a dart a at a double. And that's just another measure, I suppose, of the way that Pietrescu is being given a huge helping hand here. And maybe, just maybe, another reason why we shouldn't get too carried away. Double 18 for 156. And after that cluster of low finishes early on, that would have been another fine way to redress the balance. I'm not sure Fabian Hertz is going to get a shot at a double. Not the way that. Pietrescu is outscoring him. 
And when he gets to the double, he's not messing around. 2-18s for 5 nil, and a fuss-free five-leg cushion. He looks very calm, very composed on the finishing. He, he doesn't, I mean, OK, it's not like he's in any trouble here, but, yeah, the way he steps up each time, even from the word go, he, he does look very confident on his finishing. That was a 13 data, by the way, and a third break of throw, and he's now looking to, I suppose, in many ways, get us back on track time-wise as well, given the nature of our first match. Petresso could get this one wrapped up in double quick time. I think if we're going to get back on time, we're going to need Ricky Evans versus Danny Lauby. <laughs> That's Danny Lauby Jr., by the way. 83. There you go. No darts at double for Fabian. 56% for Ricardo. That's really good. And just to give you an insight, based on his floor form this year, which has got better... He's out averaging this season Raymond Van Barneveld, Luke Woodhouse, who was involved in the last Players' Championship final, final. against yep. Damon Hetter, Kim Hybrecht, who has won a title this year, and Keen Barry as well, and all of those all players are playing tonight. Mm. So that gives you an indication of just how we regard him. It's not just because we think he's good, he's proving that he is good. 97. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that will give us a, a, a really good barometer of where we're at, really, with uh, Petrescu and the, and the rest that you mentioned there. And there are more German players coming through. There are more 17. Germans committing to this tour. The qualifiers doing things outside as well to try and better themselves. And I see more of the ilk of Ricardo coming through in the next two or three seasons. Yeah. And maybe some sort of resurgence from the likes of Kurtz and maybe Max Hopp hopefully almost forgotten now Max Hopp because we're almost spoilt with German dart players the way things are yeah it would be nice to see Max come again I suppose in, in many ways given the, the status he had as, as being the initial trailblazer the inspiration for people like well all the young guns that are coming through including Liam Mindel Lawrence. He is still the only German player to get a PDC title, and he got two. One on the European Tour, one on the floor, and actually one of the hardest ones to win in Dublin. Pietreczko's taking his time with this shot. Yeah, 91. And he's not, gonna, he's not even going to go for it. 93. Shoot, I thought he was going for a two. That was really interesting. Well, Hertz is on a bogey number anyway, so again, that might have had a, an impact on Petrescu's thinking. But yes, one or two question marks have been raised by his approach play today. Now then, will he get a dart at a double? Petrescu is looking at 17. Hertz may well get a chance on double 18, but Petrescu for the match, looking once again at double six. And once again, on this occasion, finding double six. It's been a very varied route to glory, actually. Double four, double three, double 11, double 18. And the final one, double six for Petrescu. Six nil, comfortable as you like, against a man who was making a long-awaited return to the European Tour. But another statement of intent from the world, number 70, Ricardo Petrescu. No bother whatsoever. That was encouraging, but you sense there is room for improvement here and there. The average only 90.18, but very comfortable in the end. The finishing was strong. Six out of 11 for the 28-year-old. And it's Petrescu who goes through to face Dimitri Vandenberg in the last 32 tomorrow. On our way next, we have Kim Hybrex against Keen Barry.